Climate change is the defining issue of our time, and we are at a defining moment. I have faith in what CSIT is doing, because you are invoking, in fact, a force, an army, that in fact will not surrender. And I'm talking about our children. The Carbon Zero Initiative of Trinidad and Tobago, CZIT, is a non-profit organization dedicated to TNT becoming a carbon neutral country and a leader in sustainable practices. It is intended to, to bring out in the school the awareness about matters of climate change and the environment and lead to action. The CZ team paid a visit to the 16 finalist schools and invited 10,000 students to become ambassadors in the fight against climate change. Now it's on to the knockout stages. The competition is fierce. The teams are prepped and ready. Who will win the first prize of a study tour to Costa Rica? Here are the rules. Each match consists of three rounds. Each team member is asked one question per round. Every correct answer earns 10 points. If the answer is incorrect or time runs out, the opposing team has a chance to steal for five points. The winning team will move forward in the competition. Hello, hi there, I'm Sachin Ramsabag and welcome to the CZIT National Secondary Schools Climate Quiz and the battling today is of course on my right hand side Bishops Anesty and Trinity East Sixth Form and on my left coming from South Trinidad, Napari Girls High School. We certainly love to have you with us and also battling with these two individuals uh, is the founder of CZIT TT and I would like to welcome Mr. Baldeo Singh to please join me and uh, he's going to share some uh, wonderful words of encouragement before we begin this uh, great competition. Thank you very much Mr. Ramsabag. I'm delighted that we have two such wonderful teams competing at this stage in the competition. We already had a competition with which school had the best reception when His Excellency our founder Justice Kamona came to the school and it was a dead heat between both of you <laughs> in terms of the kind of welcome you gave and what you all showed in your interest for the environment. CZIT is very happy to be working with you all and uh, look forward to you continuing to work with us on different projects and looking forward to a good competition and the outcome of it today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And certainly we do have a wonderful team to get started off with. And let's get straight to it. What do you think about that, Alyssa? Let's get straight to the question. You ready for it? But before we get to the question, I want to ask you something. What do you think about Trinidad as a tourist destination? I think Trinidad is a very fun tourist destination because we have a lot of different things like carnival. So it's best to come here during carnival because you can experience the vast majority of things. Lovely. You could wine and dingle if you want to, all right? <laughs> but let's get back to the question. And the first up, we've got which of the following is not an effect of global warming on agriculture? Is it A, low agricultural output? B, increase in flooding? Is it C, incidence of pests and diseases? Or D, none of the above? D, none of the above. That is correct. D, none of the above is the answer. Well done. <laughs> Player number one from Napari Girls, Shalini. Mm. How things? How are things down in the South Land? South is very hot. <laughs> well, I, I would assume that much. Yeah, we yeah. live in TNT. Very, very nice. And let's get back to the question. What are current atmospheric CO2 concentration levels in parts per million or PPM? Is it A, 100, B, 200, C, 400, or D, 500? B, 200. That answer is incorrect. And uh, contestant number one? C, 400. C, 400 is correct. Yes, it is. <laughs> we move on to Solange. And Solange is going to answer this question for us. What is a consequence of landfill leachate not being managed properly? Is the answer there is no real consequence? Is it B, contamination of land of landfill soil, C, flooding of the landfill, or D, contamination of both ground and surface water? D, contamination of both ground and surface water. Yeah, I think you're right. Well done, well done. That is absolutely correct. Let's move on to Rebecca. She's smiling brilliantly, very ecstatic indeed. It's a brilliant smile indeed. Let's get back to the question. What are some hazards that Trinidad and Tobago potentially face as a result of climate change? Is it A, increased coastal flooding and saltwater intrusion into freshwater aquifers? Is it B, heat waves and drought? C, higher rainfall in the wet season, which can exacerbate flooding concerns? Or D, all of the above? 
D, all of the above. Absolutely right. That is correct, friends. Moving right along to Kristen. And Kristen, who has a lot of badges on her tie, yeah? <laughs> she's an honor society prefect, and the list can go on as well. My goodness, let's see if you can continue in the good stride, all right? Complete the sentence, please, Kristen. And let's look at this one. Trinidad and Tobago has a very something economy due to its oil and gas production is the answer A, high intensive, B, rapidly growing, C, exponentially growing, or is the answer D, carbon intensive? D, carbon intensive. That's right, carbon intensive is the answer. And we move right along to Emma. And Emma seems like she's having a good day today. <laughs> Lovely, let's hope we can continue to make it a good one. Which of the following are two natural resources commonly found in Trinidad and Tobago? Is the answer A, petroleum and iron, B, methane and bauxite? How about petroleum and asphalt? What about phosphorus and coal? C, petroleum and asphalt. I think you got that right, yeah. Phosphorus, yeah, petroleum and asphalt. I almost got that wrong, actually. Uh, Eli, my friend, lovely looking guy. Let's move on, sir. Question to you. Trinidad and Tobago's challenge in its waste collection and management system can be best described as A, escalating, B, declining, C, stagnant, or D, fluctuating. A, e, escalating. Brilliant answer indeed, absolutely correct. Right along, and uh, this individual, she looks a bit tense. <laughs> Nonetheless, I hope I can make your day with this good question. <laughs> and uh, which carbon isotope do plants prefer to use? Is it A, carbon 12, B, 13, C, carbon 14, or D, carbon 15? A, carbon 12. Yeah, that's brilliant answer indeed, carbon 12. We look along, we look along to this very tall man. Do you throw the uh, javelin, sir, by chance? No, I don't. How about uh, play basketball? Recreationally. Recreationally. See, I almost got that spot on, Mr. Joshua. Let's see this question. Uh, what is the projected concentration of carbon dioxide or CO2 in parts per million if all fossil fuel reserves are used? Is the answer 2,000? Is it 3,000? Is the answer C, 2,800? Or possibly D, 4,100? D, 2,000. That is correct. 2,000 is the answer. <laughs> Move along to the final. Question for Naparima girls for this first round. And we look to Suraya. And Suraya is possibly going to answer this question. She's already thinking of something. Let's see which of the following is the main source of electricity generation in Trinidad and Tobago. Is it natural gas? How about wind power? Possibly solar power? If not, combustible renewables? A, natural gas. Natural gas is the correct answer. So there you have it. One round of competition is absolutely brilliant and has come to an end. And uh, both teams going head to head, my good friends on the right, my even southerners on the left, is it going to be a competition of a nail biting end? How things are going to end up, we just have to wait and see. Let's see the points table. Bishop Anesty, 55. Napier McGill's, 40. And we are back with round number two. Thank you for sticking around of this Seize It uh, quiz. And we go to Alyssa with uh, this question. It looks quite interesting to me. Alyssa, the Studley Park landfill was constructed and anticipated to accept what quantity of waste per year? Is it 4,360 tons? How about 5,360 tons? Is it C, 6,360 tons? Or is it D, 7,360 tons? C, 6,360 6, tons. That answer is uh, not correct, unfortunately. Uh, Naparima College, you have the chance to take a C's. D, 7,360 tons. Let me make that correction, Naparima girls, you got that right. Yeah, D is the answer. <laughs> well done, Shalini. Uh, let's move on to this question. What is estimated to be the carbon concentration in parts per million or PPM in the year 2100 if it continues to grow at current rates? 75, 750 rather, to 1300, 850 to 1400, is it 950 to 1500 or possibly 1050 to 1600? B, 850 to 1400. That answer is incorrect. You have a chance to seize this opportunity. Um, C, 950 to 1,500. 
Unfortunately, that answer is incorrect. The correct answer for this question is A, 750 to 1300. Let's move along to Solange. And Solange is going to answer this great question for us. Which of the following are objectives of national waste recycling policy of Trinidad and Tobago? Is it A, to protect both human health and the environment, to maximize overall quantity of litter, or is it C, to reduce waste sent landfills by 60% by the year 2020, or D, all of the above? D, all of the above. That is correct. D, all of the above is correct. Let's move along to Rebecca, my very uh, smiling friend here. And what commitment does each country's nationally determined contribution represent? Is it A, to reduce water pollution? Is it B, to reduce water waste? Is it C, to conserve water, or D, to reduce greenhouse gases. D, to reduce greenhouse gases. That is correct. Well done. Well done. Kristen, my fond prefect here, we're looking at this question for you. Uh, what percentage of uh, the global greenhouse gases does Trinidad and Tobago produce? Is the answer A, 0.01%? Is it B, 0.1%? Is it C, 1%? Or is it D, 10%? B, 0.1%. That is correct. B is 0.1%. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Emma, this question is poised to you. According to Sustainable Development Goal 13, what type of, ex what type of change is required so global warming will not exceed the threshold? Is it A, institutional and technological? Is it B, technical and environmental? Is it C, political and institutional, or is it D, managerial and technological? B, technical and environmental. That answer is incorrect. Kristen, you have a chance. C, political and institutional. That answer is incorrect. The correct answer, my friends, A, institutional and technological. We move along to uh, Eli, yeah, Eli. Which of the following is the smallest contributor to the total energy supply of Trinidad and Tobago? Is the answer A, diesel fuel? B, combustible renewables and waste? Is the answer C, natural gas? Or is it D, oil products? B, combustible, combustible renewables and waste. That is correct, my friend. Combustible renewables and waste. We move along to uh, Emojin and my good friend here. Yes, she's looking a lot more relaxed, folks. Nonetheless, let's get back. What percentage of Guyana's population lives near the ocean? Mm. Is it 10%? How about 18%? C, 50% or D, 80%? D, 80%. That is correct. D, 80%. Well done. My basketballer friend here, very tall. Oh, high five there, man. Yes, brother. What is the estimated atmospheric carbon concentration in parts per million, or PPM, if you would like to refer to that, if carbon emissions are reduced to zero by the year 2100? Is it A, 150? B, 250? Is the answer C, 450? How about D, 725? C, 450. That is absolutely correct. C, 450. We move along to the final question for Napari McGills, and this question is going to be poised to Miss Soraya. And this question to Soraya is, what would the average global temperature if there were no greenhouse gases? What would be the average global temperature if there were no greenhouse gases? Is the answer A, minus 18 degrees Celsius, B, 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees Celsius? Is it C, 10 degrees Celsius, or D, 40 degrees Celsius? C, 10 degrees Celsius. That answer is incorrect. Joshua, do you have an answer for me, my friend? B, minus 10 degrees Celsius. It is in the minus bracket, but that answer is incorrect. It is uh, minus 18 degrees Celsius is the correct answer to that question. And certainly, after round number two, the competition is heating up. My good friends here from Bishop's Anesty and Trinity College Sixth Form coming up against Napari McGill's High School, just perched on the, on, below, on the below of the San Fernando Hill, enjoying the lovely breeze. But at, that, at the end of round number two, we look at the points table and we're seeing here that Bishop Anesty is poised at 95, Napari McGill's at 65.
Welcome back to the final round of competition between Naparima Girls and Bishop Anesty and also Trinity College uh, sixth form and uh, Naparima Girls trailing Trinity. And we're going to start off with Alyssa in this final round of questions. And Alyssa, what are two uses of sulfur hexafluoride? Is it A, soaps and perfumes, B, cement production and fertilizers, C, electrical insulation and in metals smelting, or is it D, packaging and clothing production? C, electrical insulation and in metal smelting. Yeah, that is absolutely right. Well done, C. <laughs> Shalini, you got to pull some, something through the hat. Uh, this is a true or false question. The government does not want to improve economic development and create new opportunities in the reduction, collection, handling and recycling of waste. Is it true or is it false? False. That answer is false, yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed, got that right. Solange, your question, and we're moving smoothly along. If we continue the current trends, how high are global sea levels estimated to rise by 2100? Is it 0 0.25 meters? Is it 0 0.5 meters? Is it one meter or is it D, 1.5 meters? C, 1.1 meter. Is that answer final? Yes. That is correct. C, one meter, it is correct. Move to Rebecca, and Rebecca is uh, certainly coming up to par. Name two greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. Is it A, methane and hydrogen? Is it B, water vapor and carbon dioxide? Is it C, ozone and helium? Or is it D, nitrogen oxides and helium? B, water vapor and carbon dioxide. That is correct. That answer is absolutely correct. We move along to Kristen. And Kristen, which is not a major source of methane? Is it hydroponics? Is it cattle rearing? Is it natural gas? Or is it landfills? A, hydroponics. That is correct. Yes, hydroponics. A new variation to agriculture indeed. Emma, name two human health problems that increases with climate change. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Depression and a mental disorder. Asthma and lung cancer heart disease and obesity. C, asthma and lung cancer. That is correct. C, asthma and lung cancer. Eli is a very serious man. He's not smiling. Oh, there we go. We have a nice little smile there, Eli. Let's see if you can uh, add some more smiles to your team. Which of the following is not an effect of climate change on coastal zones? Is it A, increased inundation and erosion? B, increased opportunity for fisheries? C, increased instability of wetlands, or D, displacement of coastal communities. B, increased opportunity for fisheries. That is correct, my friend. Well done. Well done to you. We go to Emojin, and uh, it's certainly the pressure is on. Yeah, let's get this done, nonetheless. When did the Industrial Revolution begin? A very easy history lesson for you here. Is it in uh, 1700? How about 1790? Is it C, 1886, or possibly D, 1962? B, 1790. Very correct. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Move along to Joshua. And uh, Joshua, let's chat a bit about LeBron James. You know of that guy? Yes, that's right. Yeah, he's a possibly a, a giant of a basketball player, right? Yeah. Let's hope you can be a giant of answering this question right about now. How much carbon emissions have been produced as a result of burning fossil fuels? Is the answer A, 500 billion tons? How about B, 600 billion tons? C, 700 billion tons? Or D, 800 billion tons? C, 700 billion tons. That answer is incorrect. Soraya, you have the chance to answer. Do we have an answer? B, um, 600 billion tons. That is correct, 600 billion tons. Five points added to the tally. Let's uh, move on to your question now. Uh, which of the following increases makes the ocean more acidic? Is it A, industrial waste, including acids? Is it B, carbon dioxide? Is it C, ammonia? Or is it D, chlorine? B, carbon dioxide. 10 points added to your tally. That is correct. Well done to Napari McGill's answering that last question correctly. Both teams have now uh, answered superbly. We have to wait and see what the results are showing. The Cezit family are producing marvelous opportunities for youngsters. They are certainly added to the zero emission status that has been initiated by many across the world. So let's take a look at the results table and Bishop's Anesty, Napari McGill's, who's gonna cop this prize? Well, 
At 120 points, Napri McGirls. At 135 points, Bishop's Anesty. Congratulations to Bishop's Anesty on winning this round of competition. Well done, ladies and gentlemen, as well. Congratulations to your teachers as well for promoting this type of education. I would now like to invite uh, members of the CZIT family to give you a token of their appreciation. And everybody goes in with something, not only the team placing first, but also the team that is placing second. And these girls are smiling air to air nonetheless. They came second. But you know what? You have a chance to win something as well, I understand. And uh, my good friend, the founder of this CZIT family, Mr. Baldev Singh, will tell you all about it. Uh, it's going to be posted on social media, I understand, Mr. Baldev Singh. Yes. First of all, I want to congratulate the two teams for a very, very good competition. I want you and the audience to give you a round of applause to each other as well. I also want to say that we are all in one competition, the competition to save the Earth from the effects of climate change. And the fact that you all took part in this quiz and are so passionate about it speaks volumes. We're looking forward to continuing to work with you. And remember, there's a separate competition, which is the one with your special project that is going to be judged on social media. You have to make a three minute video on something that says to the world what we can do about climate change. Uh, I, I, I think that um, unfortunately, the way our competition goes, one team has to go home and one has to go forward. Today, it's bishops and congratulations to you. We continue to work with Naparima Girls and look forward to more and more activity with you in the fight against climate change. We have a little token here to give to you to remember this day. Thank you very much for taking part. Keep up all the hard work. And we'd like your alternate to um, also come up as well. Soraya, you did well. You all did very well. All the best. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you all on Wednesday, continuing in the competition and continuing in the fight against climate change. Congratulations. One more round of applause. Congratulations to both teams, but bigger congratulations goes up to Bishops, and we're going to catch you in a bit. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.